Hey everybody, Cameron with ADC7 Owners back with another DIY video. Today we're going to be discussing what it takes to install a CWA150 upgraded coolant pump for your supercharger coolant system. And for those of you that might have seen this on the forums but weren't really sure what it takes to install one of these, then stick around and I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing we need to do is go out and do a baseline data log. So I've got my integrated engineering software up and running. We've got the data logging option selected. It's all connected. I'm going to go find my little piece of Mexico and get a baseline log done. That way we have something to compare once we install the CWA 150. Okay, we're going to try and get a little run in here. Okay, we just got back from getting our base rundown for the data log on the OEM CWA50 supercharger loop coolant pump. We're about to install the CWA150 supercharger loop coolant pump. First thing we need to do there is disconnect the battery because we're going to be unplugging our ECU. We don't wanna mess around with that. We're just gonna go ahead and be safe so that there's no power going to it while we're messing with it because we need to access some fuses underneath that. So go ahead and go disconnect your battery and then follow along with the rest of the steps in terms of getting this uh, fuse replaced because the CWO150 has a higher amperage, so we need to upgrade one of these fuses. All right, for those of you that are starting with a completely OEM coolant pump, the CWA50, uh, and have never messed with this before, then I highly suggest you check the link in the description below showing you how to install a CWA100. This process of installing the actual coolant pump itself, the, the unit will be the exact same as that video, and that shows a detailed step-by-step -step process on how to do it. The differences between the CWA100 and the 150 are that there's a different wiring harness, or I should say that the wiring harness for the 150 is pinned differently than the 100, so don't follow that in that video. And then also in the 150, we have to change a particular fuse to be, allow it to run with this engine. That's what I'm gonna be showing in detail today. But this video will not show the step-by-step -step process of actually moving the unit and uh, installing it into the vehicle since we already have a video on that. So check that out if you're new to that. Otherwise, follow along and we'll show you how to get this one running on this car. Okay, so the first step you need to do is get your actual engine cover off the cowling that goes here. And if you don't know how to do that, there's just a little weather strip piece. You just pull that off and then this thing literally just pulls right out. So once you do that, you're gonna see your windshield wiper reservoir. And this actually doesn't have anything in it because mine's kind of drained down a little bit. So if there's any fluid in this actual reservoir here, you wanna make sure it's empty. But there's two 10 millimeter bolts that hold them in and I've already got those loosened up. So I'm just gonna pull that out. And then this piece, there's a pipe that goes to the right and into the fender here. And all you have to do is kind of lift it up and pull it out to the left and it'll come right out. The next step we need to do is to remove the engine ECU. And that's what this is here. Before you get to this part, I need you to go to the trunk and disconnect your battery. You don't want to mess around with this. You definitely don't want to fry your engine control unit or your computer. So go disconnect your battery. Make sure there's no power going to this. But we're going to loosen it up first. And you do that by pushing down on these little black, this little black plastic tab, and then it pulls out. And you actually have some room to be able to maneuver it around a little bit, but don't mess with it too much because all your wiring harnesses are back here. So the next thing we're going to do is actually disconnect these from the engine, uh, from the computer. I'm going to do my best to show you exactly what you need to do. On each end of this, you'll see this piece of plastic that has some kind of vertical lines in it. You just want to kind of brace your computer and pull that out to the left. And once you do that, it'll pop that particular wiring harness off. And you're going to do that on both sides. So once you do that, you can literally just push those off real easy. And now you have your ECU out of the engine. Make sure you put this somewhere very, very safe, away from moisture, away from anywhere it could potentially fall. You do not want to damage this. Okay, I've got some harsh light on here, but I want you to be able to see what we're kind of working with. Once you've got your ECU out, then you're left with this kind of plastic cover. That's what the ECU was mounted on. That's actually the cover for your fuse box in your engine bay. There are five T20 screws and they look like this. I've already removed them. That hold this to the, uh, basically to the box that it's, it's on. And you can see there's one, two, 
There's a third one here. There's a fourth one in the back. And then the fifth one is way back here. If I can get back there, you can kind of see it there. So if those five screws and you want to get those out, they're in there pretty tight. This is the contraption I used. I got a quarter inch socket with a T20 bit on here. Make sure you tape it up because if it falls back there, you probably won't get it back. So just make sure you have something good and secure, loosen those up and then pull them out by hand. And now we can pop that off. So it should just come right out. And we have access to our engine bay fuse box. Let me get the camera set up and we'll talk about which one to replace. Okay, once you get that cover off, you're gonna see your factual fuse panel here. And we're gonna be working with some of these fuses. So we need to pop this little pink tab thing, like it's a little retaining clip off and it's just clipped into the sides here. There's no real great way to remove these other than just to kind of pop it off. So there you go, you just pull it off. And then for my car, now I will stress this, for my car, the fuse we're gonna be replacing is this 15 amp fuse here. I think it's number 16. Um, hopefully I will have a diagram pop up right about now. That one uh, is the fuse to remove that controls the, uh, basically the supercharger coolant loop. And what I did to figure that out was I turned my car on, I disconnected the PWMR, and I plugged in the CWA150, and I started pulling fuses. Uh, that's the one that turned it off. So uh, this could be different for Crec engine vehicles, could be different for other 3OT engines. I know that the entire fuse panel is different compared to like a B8 S4. So you might have to play around with this because trying to find information on this online is absolutely scarce and there's a lot of conflicting things that uh, work with this. Now, someone else did just run a standalone wire. They basically created their own wiring harness, plugged it in here with the fuse tap and they ran the wire themselves all the way through the engine bay and down into the actual coolant pump. You could always do that if you want to, but I wanna try and control this with the PWM wire to see if it works. And if not, then I'll disin, or I'm sorry, I'll depend the PWMR and run it at 100%. All right, to remove this fuse, I'm gonna use needle nose pliers. This little plastic wall here makes it really difficult to get the fuse removal tool in there. So I'm um, just gonna do it this way. I'm trying to do this while holding my camera. There you go. So we got that. We're gonna remove that. That is a 15 amp fuse, and we're gonna replace it with a 25 amp fuse. That was recommended from Merck Racing and uh, checks out with all the amperages. Uh, can, you know, when you go and look at the requirements of the CWA 150, and you can look those up online if you're curious. Okay, so the next step, now that we've got the fuse replaced, is to actually install the CWA 150 and the CWA 150 wiring harness. Um, if you're coming from a CWA 100 to a 150, you cannot use the same wiring harness. It's pinned differently, so use the supplied harness from wherever you buy it from, or learn how to repin your 100 wiring harness. Uh, I've got everything prepped here. I'm not going to show you how I do this. You can check out our 100 install video to see how to do this. But what I'm going to do, since this is the first time I've really done this and I haven't seen this done anywhere else, is I'm just going to unplug the wiring harness there. I'm going to connect the 150 wiring harness with the PWM wire still pinned and then turn on the car and see how it runs. If it comes on 100% full blast, I don't know if something's wrong there. It's been the ECU isn't working with the PWM wire and I'll have to depin that. Uh, but if it you know runs as normal, then I'll be good. That means the ECU can control the percentage of power that the pump gets, which that's a big problem with the 100. So maybe that'll be something that gets fixed on the 150s. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get this done. I'm gonna test it. And if all goes well with the test, I'm just gonna go ahead and get it completely installed. And then we can go back out and do another data log and see how it compares. Quick note for those of you running an integrated engineering tune, if you have a fan control tune on your car, which allows you to control the fan with your cruise control stock, and it's a version that's earlier than 3.2, so 3.1 or before, you need to write a support request to integrated engineering and ask for the most up-to-date version because when you install the CWA150, whether you have the PWM wire connected or not, it is going to turn your fans on immediately with the car actually off. It'll just turn them on. And you either have to flash your car back to stock to remove the fan control tune and then put whatever tune that you want back on or just ask for them for that updated uh, tune. That will allow you to still use fan control while running the CWA150. 50. So you need version 3.2 or newer. 
Okay, so as you can tell, the car is running. We've just done a full bleed of the coolant system to make sure there's no air in the system. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit, but so far it's running just fine. Um, got the PWM wire connected. So I'm gonna go drive around and see how it reacts, see if it performs correctly. So uh, on the CW100, as I mentioned, sometimes it would reverse. So instead of increasing the cycle of the pump as you got into the accelerator, it would decrease. So your IATs would shoot up. And th that's why a lot of people disconnected their PWM wire. So hopefully the CWA150 runs correctly with the PWM wire. So gonna go drive around a little bit, test it. If it looks good, I'm gonna do another data log and we'll see how it compares to the uh, CWA50 and the CWA100. Okay, so we've driven around for a little bit and the ITs are looking good. It looks like the pump is performing correctly. So we're gonna go back out and do another data log. It is about five to six degrees uh, warmer than it was when we did the first data log. So we'll keep that in mind, but we should be able to just track the delta correctly and see how it performs. Uh, so I'm gonna go find my little stretch of road and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we are about to get started here. We're gonna do this second data log. To a complete and total stop here. Okay, so we just got back from the data log run with the CWA150 and compared to the CWA50, the OEM pump, this one shaved off a few degrees over the 30 degree delta or over the, the longevity of the pull. So where the CWA50 had about a 30 degree delta, meaning on that log, I believe it went from 32 degrees Celsius to 62 degrees Celsius in the pull. This one went from, I think, 35 degrees Celsius to 58 or 59 degrees Celsius, which is awesome. I mean, that's shaving off a few degrees, which that could be a big difference for some people that are running is on the track. Now, the other thing is the CW150 ran with the PWM wire. So the ECM is able to control it and tell it when it needs to go 100% versus when it just needs to dial it back down. That's a huge advantage for me over the CW100 because the CW100, you have to run out 100% because it doesn't work with the OEM PWM wire. That could contribute to some of these coolant pumps failing in the short term because they're always ran wide open. I know my 100 failed and it could have just been a bad batch or it could have been contributed from running out 100% all the time. So with the 150, running with the PWM wire, we should see longevity in the life of those pumps. You know, my CWA50, my OEM one, OEM one is running strong still. So I'm um, really happy about that. All right, so what you're probably wanting to know is what should you upgrade to if you are coming from a CWA50, your OEM coolant pump? Would you go to 100 or 150? What would I recommend? There's a few things to answer when it comes to this. The first one is performance. Everybody wants to know which one performs better. And honestly, between the 150 and the 100, there is not a significant difference between those two in terms of performance and keeping your IATs down. They both do the job about the same. They will reduce your IATs overall by about three to five degrees. They will prevent your IATs from climbing extremely fast and they will recover faster, especially paired with a Merc Racing heat exchanger. So after that, it comes down to availability. At the time of this video, right now, the CW100s are very, very hard to find. Uh, and when you can find them, they're extremely expensive. I think the dealerships are charging $450, maybe a little bit less than that, but then you also have to buy the wiring harness. So that gets pricey. The CW150 is traditionally cheaper than the CW100 at the time of this video. And if you get it from a place like Merc Racing or somewhere else, it should come with a wiring harness. It is a little bit more of an intensive install because you have to replace that fuse, but it takes about 15 minutes to do on the C7. Shouldn't be much different on the B8s or the B8.5s. Um, so that is an advantage it's a little bit cheaper but the biggest advantage of the 150 over the 100 is the fact that it works with the PWM wire. To me, that's a huge advantage that will aid in the longevity of the life of the pump being able to be controlled by the car's ECU, not having to be ran at 100% the whole time. Obviously, if that's something you wanna do, you can always disconnect your PWM wire. But I really like the fact that it's running with the car's PWM wire. That makes me feel a lot better about having it on the car. If anything changes with this setup and I feel it's really important, I will leave it in the comments and I will pin that comment on this video. So always look out for that. As always, huge shout out to Jose at Merck Racing for sending us over the CWA150 to get figured out how to run on this car. Uh, you guys should always support them if you can, if you need heat exchangers, if you need coolant pumps, anything you can get from those guys, go support Jose.
Jose. They're constantly investing in the C7 and the 3OT community as it is. So big shout out to them. If you guys have any questions or comments on this setup or my cooling setup overall, leave them in the comments below and I'll shout out to you. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video and I'll see you on the next one.